Welcome back to the Simulator series. In today's episode, we are going to be scripting the random gift system into our game. As always, if you guys do enjoy the video where it does help you out, make sure you smash the like button, also the subscribe button, and turn this post notifications on if you want to get notified whenever I upload more Roblox development content. Also, Patreon, if you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I made during this video, there's a link down below in the description, and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, let's hop right into it. Of course, since we're creating a GUI in today's episode, I added more assets to the free GUI asset pack that all of you guys have access to. There's a link down below in the description, and you can download it for completely free. Once you've downloaded those assets you can go ahead and upload them into roblox studio by clicking on the view tab going to the asset manager and then clicking on this bulk import button right here now with this update we've only added in one brand new icon and that's the gift icon so i'm just going to go ahead and upload that and now we're all good to go what we want to do is go inside of the star gui and we're going to add a brand new screen gui to this we'll then rename this screen gui to random gift then inside of the properties we want to make sure that we set reset on spawn to false and you can set ignore gui and set the true if you want to but i'm just going to leave it as false then what we're going to do is inside of the screen gui we'll add a brand new frame now, for the sizing of the frame, for the X and the Y scale, we're going to set them to both 0.25. And then we also want to center this on our screen as well. So for the anchor point, we're going to say 0.5, 0.5. And then for the position, we're going to say 0.5 for the X and the Y scaled. And now we have that centered on our screen. We then want to adjust the border size pixel property to zero so that we don't have that black outline around our frame. We also want to add a UI corner to this as well. And we'll set the corner radius to 0.05, comma zero, just like that. And now the corner is rounded. Then inside of this frame, we're going to add a brand new text label and we're going to rename this to title. For the text, it's actually going to say random gift with an exclamation mark and then for the text color we want it to be a little bit of a lighter black so we're going to make it a little bit of a gray just like that we also want to set text scale to true for the font we're of course going to make this a gotham and then we're also going to make it bold as well we also want to adjust the sizing so for the x scale we're going to set that to 0.64 and for the y scale we're going to set that to 0.18 just like that then we want to center this on the x axis so we're going to say 0.5 for the anchor point and 0.5 for the position on the x scale just like that next what we're going to do is add an image label to this frame and we're going to rename it to gift now for the actual image we're going to go inside of our asset manager and then we're going to grab our gift icon right here and set that image to that id just like that and then we can close our asset manager we then want to adjust the background transparency to one of the image label we also want to set the scale type to fit and then we also need to adjust the sizing of this as well for the x scale we're going to set that to 0.1 and for the y scale we're going to set that to 0.25 then for the rotation because we want this to appear slanted a little bit to the left we're going to set this to negative 20 and now we can see it's kind of slanted to the left we can then go ahead and adjust the position for the x and y scale we're actually going to set both these to 0 0.03 so there we go and i clearly forgot one thing we actually need to set the background transparency of the title label to one because we don't want there to be any background then we're going to duplicate the gift image label this time for the rotation we actually want to make it the positive 20 so it's slanted the same amount but this time to the right instead of the left for the position we're just going to adjust the x scale and we're going to set that to 0.87 and now that gift appears on the right side so that looks good next what we're going to do is duplicate the title text label and we're going to rename this to reward for the text of this text label we actually want to say plus plus 999.99 m just like that and then for the text color we want to set this to black next we're going to position this directly in the middle of the gui so we're going to say 0 0.5 0 0.5 for the anchor point and then 0 0.5 on the x and the y for the position now that we have that centered we actually want to resize this a little bit so for the x scaled size we're going to set that to 0 0.45 and now that looks pretty good what we're then going to do is add another image label to this frame and we're going to rename this to click bg bg stands for background it's just a short way of spelling that word out for the background transparency of this image label we of course want to set that to one for the scale type we of course want to set that to fit and now for the actual image of this we want to go into view we want to go to the asset manager we want to go to our images and then we want to grab this rebirth icon small background right here and copy that id paste that directly into there and now we have that image for the size of this image we want to set the x scale to 0.125 and for the y scale we're going to set it to 0.28 just like that then we can go ahead and drag this over to the left side of this reward text label that we created let's of course make sure that we adjust the position so that it's centered on the y axis so we're going to say 0.5 right there and 0.5 right there next what we're going to do is duplicate this image label and just drag it inside of itself so there we go and we're going to rename this to click then what we want to do is go into view go into our asset manager once again and we're going to grab our clicks currency icon right here and then for the image of this image label we're going to go ahead and set it to that for the size of this image label we're going to set it to 0.5 on both the x and the y and then for the position we want to center this on both the x and the y so 0 0.5 0 0.5 just like that and now that is looking pretty good what we're then going to do is duplicate the title text label and then we're going to rename this to subtitle now for the text of this it's actually going to say thanks for playing with an exclamation mark and then we also want to make the text color black as well so just like that now for the position we do want it centered on the x-axis but for the y we're actually going to set the y scaled in the position to 0.6 so that it 
appears below the reward and the image label beside it. What we then want to do is adjust the size of this as well, just a little bit. So instead of being 0.18 for the Y scale, we're actually going to set that to 0.125. So it appears a little bit smaller. And now we're just going to drag it down a little bit so that we're beneath the reward and the image label next to it. Next, what we're going to do is inside of the frame, we want to add a brand new text button and we're going to rename this to collect. Now for the background color, we want to set it to a blue, just like that. For the text, it's actually going to say nothing. For the size on the X scale, we're going to set it to 0.64. And on the Y scale, we're going to set it to 0.16, just like that. Then of course, we want to make sure that we center it on the X. So we're going to say 0.5 for the anchor point on the X and then 0.5 for the X scaled on the position. Then we want to bring this down a little bit. So I think right there actually looks fine. And that's still centered on the X axis. Then we're going to duplicate the title text label once again, put that inside of our collect text button. For the text, this is actually going to say collect. For the text color, it's actually going to be white. And for the size, we're going to say 0.8 on the X and the Y scaled, just like that. Then of course, we want to make sure that we center it on both the X and the Y scale. So there we go. Then we're going to add a UI corner to this button. And for the corner radius, we're going to set that to 0.2 on the scale, just like that. Now we're pretty much done with the GUI, but we sort of have a little bit of a blank space towards the upper middle of this GUI. What we're going to do with this is we're actually going to enlarge the title just a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. And then we want to move it down slightly as well. So maybe we'll center it with those GIFs. If you're wondering what the size and position of it is, that's it right there. Now that we've done that, the GUI seems to be done. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the enable property of the screen GUI to false. And now we can start working on scripting this. Now, when it comes to scripting, the first thing we want to do is add the player data so that we can track each time we give a player a gift so that we know when we want to give a player another gift. So what we're going to do is go inside of the replicated storage inside of the player data folder and open up the template module script. Inside of here, we have a table called template. And all we're going to do is say comma after the last data that we added. And then we're going to say random gift. And that's going to be equal to zero, just like that. We can then go ahead and close out that module script. And now inside of the server script service, we want to add a brand new server script to this so that we can start scripting it on the server side. We'll rename this script to random gift. And then of course, inside of the script, we have to make most of our common variables. All right, so we've got all of our common services. Now, of course, we need to create a variable for the remotes folder, which is inside of the replicated storage. We also want to get the player data manager, which is a module script. And that's inside of the server script service dot player data dot manager. There we go. And then we also need to get our stats module script, which is actually inside of the replicated storage dot utils dot stats, just like that. Now we also want to create two static variables. The first variable is actually going to be called gift cooldown. And what we're going to set this to is a number. And more specifically, the number is going to represent how many seconds we want to wait in between giving a player a gift. So for instance, if we want to give a gift to a player every single minute, we're going to say 60 because 60 seconds is of course equal to one minute. If we want to wait 10 minutes, we of course set this number to 600 and now it'll wait 600 seconds. Just for testing purposes, we're going to set this to 10 so that we can quickly test this out and make sure that it's working. Then for the second static variable, this is actually going to be called clicks per rebirth. Now, the way that our gift is going to work is whenever we give a gift to a player, we have to decide how many clicks we actually want to reward the player with. Now, one random formula that I came up on my own with is maybe we want to give the player 10,000 clicks for every single rebirth that they have. You, of course, can come up with your own formula, but that's how we're going to do it. So we're going to say 10,000. Next, we'll say task.spawn. Now, inside of here, we want to create an anonymous function. And inside of this function, we want to create a while loop. So we're going to say while true do. And at the bottom of this, we want to say task.wait1. So it waits one second. Then what we're going to do is we're going to loop through all the players in the game. So we're going to say four underscore comma player in players colon get players do. And then we're going to create a variable for their profile. So we're going to say local profile equals player data dot profiles and index that with the specific player. If we don't find any profile, then all we want to do is continue through this loop and stop the function right there. Then we're going to create another variable called last gift time. And that's going to be equal to profile dot data dot random gift. And then we're going to say if last gift time plus gift cooldown is greater than OS dot time. So the current time, then what do we want to do? Well, we want to continue end because that player is still on cooldown. So they should not receive a gift. Now, if we've made it to this point, we actually want to reward the player with a gift. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new function up here called give gift. What this function is going to accept is going to be a player. And the second argument is going to be player data. And we can't exactly type check that. So we're just going to leave that as is, but the player data is actually going to be the pro profile dot data and we're going to pass that to this function so let's go ahead and actually call that function we're going to say give gift We'll pass through the player and then we'll pass through the profile dot data just like that. Now, inside of this function, the first thing we want to do is create a variable for the reward amount. And how are we going to calculate the reward? Well, like I said, our formula is going to be the clicks per rebirth times the amount of rebirths the player actually has. So we're going to say player data dot rebirths 
just like that. Now, what if the player has zero rebirths? We still want to give them something, right? So we're going to say if reward is greater than zero, then reward is going to be equal to itself. So we're not going to change this value. Otherwise, we're going to set it to clicks per rebirth. So if the player has zero rebirths, then we're just going to give them 10,000 clicks. Now that we have the reward determined, we're then going to go ahead and adjust their player data. So we're going to say player data dot adjust clicks. We're going to pass through the player and we're going to pass through the reward amount. Then for the actual player's data, we want to make sure that we update the random gift property and we want to set that equal to the current time plus gift cooldown just like that so right here we're giving the player the reward then we're putting them on cooldown and then we want to use a remote event to notify the player so that we can open up the gui and display the reward that we got and everything else like that so what we're going to do is go inside of the replicate storage inside of the remotes folder and we're going to make a brand new remote event and the name of this remote event is actually just going to be called random gift just like that then back inside of our script we're going to say remotes dot random gift fire client we want to pass through the player and then we also want to pass through the reward which is how much the player is earning and now we're pretty much done with the server side of things so so just to explain exactly how this is going to work, when the game first starts up and this script is loaded, every single second, what it's going to do is it's going to loop through every single player and it's going to check if they should receive a random gift because they're off cooldown. Now, if they are off cooldown, we're going to give them a gift. And the way that we determine the reward of the gift is by simply figuring out how many rebirths the player actually has. And then we're going to multiply that by 10,000. Now, if the player has no rebirths, then we're still going to just give them 10,000 clicks. Once we've determined the reward, we're then going to adjust the player's clicks, apply the cooldown, and then we're going to notify the client, hey, we just gave you a random reward so now you can do all the stuff that you want to do on the client side so with all that being explained let's go ahead and start working on the client side of stuff so to start working on the client side of things we're going to go inside of the star player inside of star player script and inside of this gui folder right here and we're going to add a brand new local script to this we'll of course rename this to random gift and then we're also going to need some of our common variables that we always use in here so i'm just going to go inside of the jump shop and then just copy all of these variables right here and paste them directly into the script right here now realistically what variables do we need we don't need many actually but we definitely need the format number and and the remotes variable right there then we can go ahead and update the gui variable so instead of saying jump shop it's actually going to be random gift and then let's start creating some variables for this specific gui so we're going to say reward and that's actually going to be equal to the frame dot reward which is the text label that displays how much currency the player just got rewarded for this random gift and we're also going to create a variable called collect which is going to be inside of the frame and this is the collect one that the player can click on to actually close the gui now that we have all those variables we can actually start scripting this stuff so like i said with the collect button whenever we actually click that button what we want to do is we want to close the gui so this is as simple as just any normal exit button. So what we're going to do is we're going to say gy.enabled equals false anytime the player clicks on the collect button. Now, how do we know when we actually get a gift? Well, remember, we use a remote event to do that. So we're going to say event connect. And now rather than making any anonymous function, what we're going to do is actually create a function up here called update. GUI. And the only argument that this is going to accept is reward, which is of course going to be a number. Now that we've created that function, we can go ahead and connect this remote event to that specific function right there. Now inside of the update GUI function, we actually want to update the reward text label. So we're going to say reward dot text equals format number dot format compact. And then we want to pass through the reward number. And then finally, we just want to set the GUI to enabled so that the player actually sees that they just received a reward. Now that we've done all that, we can go ahead and close out that script, go into our game and test this out. Now, once we're in our game, we actually see that we get a gift instantly and that's because by default, it's set to zero. So the player automatically gets a gift when they first join the game. Now, if we wait a couple of seconds, eventually we will see that we get another gift. And there we go. We just received another gift as well. So we just got another 10K. And when we click on collect, we can see that that GUI goes away. Now, there's actually one small thing that I kind of forgot about. When we set the reward text, we just set it to the specific number. But what we would actually rather do is say plus, and then we're going to say the number. And the reason that we're doing that is because that's how the text label is originally set up anyway. So we go into our game, we can now see that we get plus 10K. So so now that looks a little bit better. Anyways, one of the final things that we want to do is go back into the random gift server script and we should probably update the gift cooldown variable maybe to like 600 because like I said, this is going to be 10 minutes. Maybe you actually want it to be 300 so the players get a gift every five minutes. Either way, you guys can do whatever you want, but you probably don't want the player getting a gift every 20 seconds. That seems really short. And then one more thing that you guys might want to do is you might want to go back into the GUI. We actually probably want to enable this. Let's go ahead and click on the frame right here. And then if you guys have the auto scale light plugin, you can go ahead and add a constraint to this. And then if we want to check the GUI, GUI on different devices, we can, and we can see that it looks fine on all devices, so that's great. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, that's going to be it for this episode. As always, if you guys enjoyed, make sure you smash the like button, also the subscribe button, and turn this post notifications on if you want to get notified whenever I upload more Roblox about my content. I also have a Patreon if you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I made during this video. There's a link down below in the description, and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode.